again Eugene Edwards and today we're talking about guitar solos. We're bringing down some fundamental guitar soloing concepts and for you beginners out there don't tune out if you've never played a solo these concepts concepts are important for players of all levels. Plus we have a super exciting announcement about a cutting edge music discovery so stick around for that. We have lots of playing to get through so let's get to it and helping us through today's journey is our good pal coming from New Orleans Dinesh Lacraj. Hello, Dinesh. Hey, Eugene. How's it going, man? It's going great. I'm very excited about this episode and excited to hear you play because uh, I know you're a master uh, at, at solos. And also we have, and definitely helping us out today, as always, the important Dr. Dylan Kalajuri. Hello. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello, gentlemen. It's lovely to see you. It's lovely to see you too, Dylan. Thank you for your yes. help putting this together, uh, all, uh, both of you. Um, we've got, let's talk about some gear though. Dinesh, I'm used to seeing you with a Telecaster, so, or with a Strat rather, I'm sorry. So it's funny to see you with a Tele. What do you have there? And can you demo uh, that, that thing for uh, us? Absolutely, man. Yeah, I'm super excited. I just got this guy in. It's the uh, American Original, and this is the 70s uh, Tele Custom. So you've got the little wide range there, uh, wide range pickup in the uh, neck, and then uh -huh. you've still got your, your traditional tele bridge. Uh, cool thing with this is you've got uh, four controls. So there's a, a dedicated tone and a volume for um, you know, each uh, the, the bridge and for the neck position. You know? Let's check it out. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Definitely two yes. different voices between those pickups for sure. And Dylan, uh, you've got something that's pretty exciting as well. I've got something special. Very today. new. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is the Jason Isabel uh, Telecaster. That's right. Nice. There it is. Can you see it? All of its glory. Uh, it's wow. 59 style body. I mean, it's got a, I think it's a mid 60s C neck mm -hmm. and uh, 7.25 radius. The, the big, then you've played this a couple times too, right, Eugene? I'm actually going to be filming a demo tomorrow. Uh, of that. So I have one here as well, and mine's better than yours. By the way, it's pronounced <laughs> it's pronounced Isbel, not Isbel. Isabel. Sorry. But we've got checking. something for the blooper reel at the end of the year. So you you've made your mistake for this episode. You, you, you got, got that out of the way. way. I'm, I'm proud of you. Let, <laughs> no, let, no, let's hear because because that's got a, a kind of a modified twisted tele pickup in the neck position. Yeah, Can the neck. So first? the neck sounds awesome. Too, yeah. <laughs> And then here's the here's the bridge, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, Sorry. it's it's good. I'm 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 loving the one I have here. I, I'm I hate to hand it back. I've got the American Pro HSS Stratocaster Ooh. here, and uh, quite importantly, the humbucker because of the solo I'm playing later on the episode. I need a humbucker, and I need that tone rolled way, way back. Uh, but right now, I'm in the middle position, and I'm using the Nashville rock and roll setting that uh, Rebecca Lavelle of our friends Lark and Poe designed for our uh, our Mustang GTS amps. <laughs> Rebecca. Wow, Good that time. sounds great. That sounds All right. Good. So yeah. let's get to really it. Nice. Uh, we, if we have any questions about the solos that we're talking about today uh, or the approaches that they represent, drop them in the comments. We'll do our best to answer them. Uh, and all the solos we're playing today, you can learn note for note on Fender Play. Just search for the full song version or click the links in the description. Um, so today we're going to talk about three concepts of soloing riff based, new melody, and playing over the changes. And I want to note before we get into these three terms, we're just using those terms for the sake of simplicity. Uh, we coined them just for this episode. Um, and so we're going to start with the riff-based approach. Dinesh, how about an example of a riff-based solo from, oh, I don't know, how about the Runaways? Yeah, let's do it. Um, let's do some Cherry Bomb. That comes to mind. <laughs> 
I'll cue up a little backing track here. Yeah, we're we'll... using backing. Oh, by the way, uh, we're using backing tracks from the site. So That's if, right. you, if you're if you go on the Fender Play site, you can play along with these backing tracks as well. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dinesh. Yeah, yeah, all good. Let's do it. Yeah, dude, I love that solo. That's a great little tasty right in the middle of everything. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so now what so what do we mean by a riff or lick based solo in this context? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, during that part of the solo, I know we're not hearing it, but like, mm -hmm. you know, that is just the basic uh, riff of the song, right? So you've got that. So what's happening there, guys, we're just in the, uh, you know, the B minor pentatonic, which is, you know, we're here. And she's basically um, just playing it in two separate spots. So the cool thing about this, it's a pentatonic uh, minor, and we're getting to hear the same notes, but in two different spots. And uh, Eugene, we were talking about this earlier, because, you know, if you're thinking about it... Uh... Like, why did we play it up here in the beginning? Those first two notes. Mm -hmm. Kind of sounds a little bit thicker up there. You know, we're using the B instead of the high E. So it's, it's kind of nice to see that those two places share so the, the same point is, It's uh, the notes. exact same pitch. It's the exact same pitch. Mm -hmm. But if you play yeah. it on a different string, uh, say in that case, you're playing on a lower string, therefore higher on the neck. So you are, you're going to get a slightly different tone out of your guitar. And that's a choice that she made um when when she cut that solo because you're right she could have played that first band on the high e string yes but no that wasn't that wasn't the right that wasn't the right tone so that's another that's a little pro tip about when you're soloing and kind of thinking about does it make a difference what string up on it sometimes it, it could so what yeah. what do you think this type of solo lends to a song uh Dinesh? yeah i think for this you know it's like like a classic example of we're staying in the key and we're kind of just going for it based off a of scale as opposed to, um, you know, if there's a solo that kind of goes with the melody or like a vocal line of the song, right? right? So with this guy, it's kind of like you get your key locked in and then you just kind of go for it based off of, you know, the chord that you're over in this case, which is uh, a minor. So then that pentatonic, you're just going for it. And it could be blues based, which it pretty much is blues based, but we're just kind of, you know, hitting it with the distortion and kind of like the rock attitude, you know? Right. And, and, and that makes me, uh, in fact, that leads to my next question is, is there a specific type of song or genre that, that this approach um, uh, in which it works best or better? I definitely think we hear this a lot in rock as mm -hmm. this being a rock song uh, mm -hmm. sound. And uh, man, blues, it's a big one, right? Especially yeah. if we're doing blues music. Um, so yeah, anytime, I, I think mostly in rock, we hear this, um, just because you, you're getting to do a solo over the platform, which in this case is the riff, um, or if you're going over the chord change itself. And in this case, it's kind of just staying in that one spot in that mm -hmm. one, uh, chord the whole time. So th I think that's a good example of like, when you're going to hear this mostly in rock and blues, you know? Right. And if someone wants to play a riff or lick based solo, what are some starting points to Nash? I think the main thing is to first identify what the riff is and where it is. And then from that, you can build your solo by knowing, you know, okay, for first thing, if I didn't know this solo at all, mm -hmm. um, and someone was just showing me this riff, first thing I'm going to know is, okay, that's a B. So now I know I'm in B. Now I just need to know if it's major or minor, and then I can take it from there. So I think the first things first is just identify the riff where it is as far as what key it's in and then i think you can build it from there you know gotcha and we're talking about uh, dylan uh, uh bring it in here any notable players or songs that use this type of soloing absolutely and be, i mean just before i do that i wanted to throw like a, a nod to our brand new beginners because um i know this this topic can be just the word solo can be in intimidating right yeah um and all of these different things that you're hearing major minor um 
there's some stuff that, that Dinesh is doing and it's done in this song that you can actually access right away. So one thing would be like palm muting. That, that type of technique, you can check out the lesson on the site that's palm muting, right? So that's in the song. Just bending itself at... Uh, well, if we just learn how to bend just one note first, right? You got to, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Uh, check that <laughs> maybe, or I think they're, yeah, maybe don't eat any elephants actually. But anyways, no, I, you know what? Yeah, let's, let's use a different phrase. Have some. Uh, but I think that this is something you can, you can kind of, you can tiptoe into this. I invite you to lean into the, to the sort of agitation that this might bring to you and to give it a shot today, have a growth mindset about it. That's it. Okay. Uh, some of the notable <laughs> players that use this, I'd say, uh, Chuck Berry or Johnny B. Good. There's um, right. Louie Louie. By the Kingsman, and sure. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, Tush, ZZ Top. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, we covered yeah. that one sometime last year, I believe, on a ZZ Top oh. episode uh, with, with, with Dinesh. So remember, everyone, if, you're, if you want to learn any of the solos you hear today, they're available on Fender Play, as well as the backing tracks you're hearing. And so and you can try that out for free right now. So yeah. let moves us to our, our second category. And, and uh, uh, I, I've got the steering wheel on this one. This is uh, what we call playing over the changes. Um, so the, the riff or lick bass approach is one way to play a solo on a song. Um, uh, playing over the changes means your solo will play notes that significantly match the chords as the chords are moving along. So I'm going to play an example from the Great Rivers Cuomo and see if you can hear the notes that match up with the chord changes. Now I'm going to clumsily, because uh, I'm the least tech guy here, uh, get this backing track Aww. going. And I'll see if I remember this solo. Bear with me. Are you okay there, Dylan? You know, I I'm in junior high right now for that moment. <laughs> I'm back in junior high. Totally. And news, I'm going news, through struggles. Buddy. They canceled gym tomorrow, so um, yes. fair enough. So that's say that it ain't so solo. by Weezer. By the way, guys, I'm tuned down half a step because as we know about that album, they were tuned down half a step. So right. if you're playing along, make sure you do that. Uh, if you're gonna play along with the backing tracks. So uh let's okay, so Dylan, what did yes. I just do? Yeah. I mean, gosh, you know, well, you did a great job. It sounded really good. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you're looking at this style, I mean, can you talk a little bit about how they're playing over the changes of the song or what they're doing? So here's what's significant about this. So, so let's talk about what are the chords mm -hmm. that are happening during the solo. So this mm -hmm. is, if you will, uh, this is more important than, than it is in, in say, the riff-based uh, uh, approach. So the chords are essentially uh, C-sharp minor as I'm... And then uh, G sharp, frankly major, then A major, then E. So the key notes of the of the melody that I'm playing here in this solo are gonna are gonna target in on key notes. So in this, uh, I'm gonna play I'm gonna play the solo the phrase an octave lower than than you heard it. So this first note, fourth fret high E string is the top note of this C-sharp minor chord. And then the next, that note, fourth fret B string, the D-sharp note, sits, it's, it sits right here on this G-sharp chord. So it's... Right, so see how already my notes are, are moving along with the chord change in a significant way. Uh, and then my bend... Uh, when I bend up to... This note, I'm actually playing the major seventh of my E major chord. It's actually wow. create this melancholy sort of thing. Courageous. Um, and then, uh, and then, obviously, when I do this, uh, uh, that the fact that I'm going down to this D sharp note again, it's very, very key because that note actually fits the chords as they're going along. So, um, and you know, there's a lot of uh, this is my my personal 
my favorite style of soloing. When I hear a guitarist take this approach, it delights me to no end. Yeah, and you know, uh, yeah. the cool thing is you're playing over the changes and uh, to help to just kind of like cement the point you're saying, like he's outlining the chords with the notes that he's playing. So obviously right. each chord is made up of notes and he's selecting notes as sort of landing spots between each one of those chords and it's cementing, he's playing the changes. In jazz, when you hear people talk about playing the changes, they don't just sound cool while they're talking about it. That's actually what they're doing. They're playing the changes. Right. And uh, so, Dinesh, can you dis let's discuss some benefits or drawbacks of this method, or at least some things to consider uh, with this approach? Totally. The first thing that came to mind was, if you are going to play this song, you're not going to just go to that solo section and just play whatever. Like, this is a what we would say... I don't want to say the term written, but like we were talking about this earlier too, like a written out part. Like this is like a part of the song, mm -hmm. even though it's still a solo section, you know, uh, as opposed to like Cherry Bomb that we just heard, you know, I could have played something different, but still stayed in the same key and used the same scale and it would have mm. definitely done the job. Right. Yeah. Uh, right. But in this situation, like, dude, this is a part of the song. This is a vocal. This is it could also be sung like a melody as well. So this is one of those ones where like, you know, if somebody invited me to come play on this song, like I should probably have that solo down. Mm, yeah. So, right. You so it's sort of like it's, yeah, you, you kind of want to know this one ahead of time. It's not like, hey, yeah. what key are we in? And I'll just riff. In fact, let's try this real quick. This is, uh, yeah. I'm going to try playing the riff lick based approach. I'm going to play like C minor pentatonic, I guess, over the changes. I don't know That's if that's going to work. Here we go. Here we're we're we go. off script here, buddy. So, I mean, it, it, we, we can apply these approaches over different songs. It's just, but it's right. a very different type of. And that was still good. I mean, that was still awesome. It's just, yeah, that was still awesome, UG, by the way. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it doesn't stand out as much as what we heard previously, where it's kind of a little more melodic. So, yeah, I mean, either one definitely worked. And, you know, other, uh, other players and other songs that use this method, um, I would certainly put in the. Um, the uh, <laughs> That first sure. solo and comfortably numb very oh, much yeah. follows the chord changes. Yes. Um, I'll tell you the other one that's on Fender Play uh, is uh, by uh, Weezer is, is is Buddy Holly. The and then significantly the there it is taking advantage of the the D minor the F natural note that's in D minor that resolve to the A major. Yeah. So uh, that one's also on the side, I believe. Um, in fact, it mentioning Comfortably Numb, that first solo uh, plays over the changes. The second yeah. solo, the last one that rides out, that's really more the, the riff licks based Lick. approach over B minor, right? Yes. So there are songs where the player will, will use both two, the two different approaches. Um, and, uh, and by the way, there's always going to be crossover. You'll right. notice, hopefully you'll notice there's crossover. Some uh, some songs will be almost uh, playing over the changes. Then there'll be just a riff based thing and then back to the changes. And um, there's a third approach. And this is Dylan's world. This is what we're going to call new melody. Oh, yes. Well, uh, yeah. So this is fantastic. I mean, basically, uh, the concept you guys were just talking about, this is about, I want you guys to pay attention to listening for patterns in this, as well as listening to sort of a, a counter line against what's being heard. So I'm going to play the solo from Reptilia. If you're not familiar with that, it's a fantastic song. And here we Great go. Song. Yeah, you ready? Okay. All right. So there's a nice. lot going on there, right? It can, it can sound yeah. a little intimidating at first, right? But mm -hmm. let's deconstruct it. And if you're a beginner, don't be intimidated here because this is actually something that if you can gather this concept in your head, as you move through music, you're going you're gonna to be able to recognize these patterns as you're playing and you'll be able to apply this in the future. Okay. So uh, basically, <laughs> uh, 
the idea of new melody, right? So we're building the perfect guitar cell and new, new melody is saying new material. So we've got the, 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 uh, we've got the melodies that are counterpoint, counterpoint melodies in the song. And then we've got the melody that the, the singer's singing, right? Mm -hmm. So this is something that hasn't been introduced in the song at all up to this point. And when we tear it down, there's really only two parts here and they're, they're designated by a rhythm. So if you listen to the whole thing one more time, I think you'll be able to hear them really well. Listen for two distinct sections. So I don't know if you noticed, we returned, we returned to that first idea. So there was idea one that repeated about four times with some mm -hmm. slight variation on the ending of the idea. Right. And then idea two, and idea two could have kept going, right? You had... I mean, you could have kept going up the neck. It was a rhythmic idea that's built out, right? So when, when you start to look at it in these kind of macro concepts, it's, it's not quite as intense or as intimidating as one might think. To come out to, to come out a solo like this very very smart so uh so it's like you're constructing a whole song there was like uh like you said like that uh a a b a pattern yes. as we, we talk about like usually like it'd be like verse verse chorus verse but yeah the solo is kind of a this is a micro song inside right inside of this song in a way yeah yeah now um and you can create patterns like the solos that you can sing you know you can because -da -da -da, there's a pattern there and, and just like just like you would do that and when Billie Eilish writes a song, she comes with a melody that's a pattern. And you're thinking, mm -hmm. if you're going to come up with a solo for a song, maybe think in that songwriter-ish way. And like we're saying is, the idea here is, um, if you're, um, maybe you're writing your own song and you're, and you're kind of you know, building your tracks in GarageBand or something like that, and you've got a spot for a guitar solo, these are just three ideas to help you get started, to kind of help you just kind of kickstart yes. you into playing a solo. You've got at least these three categories of approaches. Now, um, now back to your uh, the, the new melody way. Dinesh, can you, again, let's talk about some pros and cons here. What are some important things to think about here when, when we're, when we're going to go down this road? With the melody stuff? Yeah. You know, the, the thing, I think also, the thing to remember here is, like you were saying too, Dylan, about the beginner stuff, it's like the melody solos don't have to be anything intense. They can mm. be really simple things. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a song, uh, I don't think there's a Neil Young song, but like, I think it's just like one note during the whole song <laughs> kind of thing. Most likely. Right? And uh, yeah. it's like the cool stuff about the melody stuff uh, is, yeah, it could be simple. It could be just a few notes. Um, and again, the only side that I would say is if there is a particular song that you're learning, and there is some sort of solo like that where it's very melodic based, uh, especially something that you can sing to. That's always a good indication. You probably want to stick to that because uh, everyone right. that hears that song is going to associate that part. Ah. Just like the end of the Buddy Holly tune, you know, the Weezer song. It's like you got to hear that, you know. Um, so I think that's the, the cool side of the melody thing. And then there's also that other side where it's like, let's make sure we, we stick to it. Um, but, mm -hmm. you know, blending them together is really an awesome thing, too. Yeah. Here, here's we got a question from someone. Uh, it's uh, from Ed Gunn, who's watching on YouTube. He's asking, "Do you hey, select? The, do you hey, Ed, Do you select the chords while playing, or is it all mapped out ahead of time, Dylan?" Ooh. Boy, you know what? I think that that's there's two approaches. Generally, the chords are are picked ahead of time, and when you're listening to this song, the, the Reptilia song, we have B and E, right? Mm -hmm. And so when he's playing through these changes. He's spelling out a B minor chord, but he's landing on F sharp, which is the third of the E chords. Excuse me. Uh, it's the second of the E chords. So basically, he's he's delineating the chords just like they did in uh, Say It Ain't So, but in a melodic way so that it connects with the listener. So the answer is both. <laughs> that was a long answer to say both. Right. Now Here's, here's one, uh, Dinesh. This is coming from uh, Michael, who's also watching on YouTube. How is acoustic different from electric? For solos Ooh, that's a great good question one. oh that's, that's good a good question because yeah, that will change yeah. your technique you know the only thing you got to remember about acoustic is 
I think maybe you probably won't be doing as much bending just depending on the string gauge you have. Um, sometimes acoustics, you know, the strings are a little bit thicker. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the action's a little bit higher. So I think when you're playing acoustic or like at least when I think about playing acoustic, I might do a solo and maybe not rely so much on bending, but maybe just moving to the notes instead. Um, it's, you know, something where it's like... On a, an electric, it's pretty simple to do, but you know, an acoustic, there's more beef behind those strings, you know, sliding up to the notes um, and maybe putting the bending in the fore, foreground, you know, in the background a little bit more. So that, that would be my main thing, thinking about that um, electric versus and also, acoustic. And you also, know. you know, electric guitars, generally because of the amplifier, we tend to have more sustain on those than on yeah. acoustics. Yes. So you may, your, your, the note length may be affected, but, uh, but you'll, you'll kind of feel around to that. And um, by the way, Dinesh, uh, producer Perry uh, insists on making a note of this. It was Cinnamon Girl is the Neil Young song. Cinnamon Girl. Yes. That's thanks to, that's thanks to Kilgore Trout 321. Thank you, Kilgore Trout 321. Hopefully, hopefully I didn't just give out the nuclear codes. Um, well, so, <laughs> one more, and um, oh, also, someone, uh, Ava Simone is asking, I'm a lead guitarist, but I'm playing Led Zeppelin and I'm making my own solo. Any suggestions? Dinesh. Yeah, making your own solo over a Led Zeppelin song. Yeah, apparently. Wow. That's cool. I actually <laughs> yeah, used to cool, do yeah. this quite a bit when I <laughs> didn't really know the song that well. At mm -hmm. least, again, uh, going back to when we were talking about Cherry Bomb, once you know where the solo is, I mean, go for it. And I think after you start listening to it over and over again, I mean, like if you're playing a song that's in, you know, and you figured out the solos in E, the main thing is just to find the key figure out the key where the solo is. And, uh, you know, the Zeppelin stuff's all pentatonic. So most of that stuff, as long as you got your pentatonic scale down, mm -hmm. um, just try stuff in that scale. And as long as you're in the right key, you're going to be hitting some good stuff. Jimmy and I don't Page think there's is, any rules there. He's a great example of a player. Some of his, his solos will just be riff-based pentatonic thing, and other times it'll be very, very specifically composed very solos. Specific. Right. Um, so, so that's a great uh, catalog to explore in terms of just uh, yes. And, you, and when, this time, and when you're listening to tunes, uh, everyone just kind of think into the hey, is this a riff-based solo? Is this kind of a specific mel new melody? Uh, by exa example of other songs that have solos like that have that their own new melody. Uh, one is like, you know, and don't fear the reaper, like we're pretty much in A minor. Yeah. And then when the solo happens, it changes abruptly to like this F minor, I think. Yeah. And this, and it just takes off and this whole, it's like a whole other song happens. And it's, so that's a new melody. Also, my favorite, one of my favorites is uh, Black Coffee in Bed, which is also a song that's on the site. Squeeze. Uh, because it goes up a nice. key. And... <laughs> He just Glenn Tilbury just skates over those those changes really really well, but it's like it's it's different chord changes than we than we've heard previously in the song. So there are yeah. and uh, an oyo como va, which is also on that site. You know where Santana pretty much at. That's a melody that we don't that that uh, the singers don't sing. You know, it's 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 its own constructed melody. Right, so, very yeah. defined. We still have more questions, which is great. I was hoping we would from Matt B. Hey, what do you guys suggest beginners focus on aside from theory, uh, uh, like in terms of picking exercises? Dylan, I, I'll send this. Wow, one Matt, that's a great question. Well, you know what? I think um, uh, one of the things that you would definitely want, if you're not a Fender Play member, I, I think you should probably join because we have paths on Fender Play that help you decipher the insane amount of information. The internet is like a fire hose of information pointed at your head at any moment, right? And then, so we're trying to get that down to a garden hose size, and that's a team of doctors doing that. But anyways, uh, outside of that recommendation, uh, I would recommend that you really focus on striking a balance between uh, learning new things and uh, basically becoming an expert at them. Because a lot of times beginners can become, you know, I can't, I can't hear this one note on the G chord, so I'm gonna stop my progression of learning and kind of like put myself down a lot and figure that this isn't gonna work out. I think a lot of this is about you finding catharsis and you learning a lot of material and striking the balance that works for you as you move forward so that you want to do this every day. I think alternate uh, picking <laughs> to answer Matt's question. <laughs> Good. 
and, and the doctor says I can't have that much liquid. So I don't know where oh, you're going okay. with that. But but no, um, <laughs> uh, in terms of picking exercises, I think we definitely have some some uh, you know some some alternate picking stuff. Some yeah. hybrid picking is definitely going to yes. be important. Take those, uh, go through that lesson course if you're going to go into country soloing. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, and then also we do want to have nice articulation for some solos, like yeah. the one like the reptilia solo that Dylan played. It's very specific. But but uh, Dinesh, play like a, a, a the solo from Cold Shot, which I think we have on the site. And yeah, like the, like the right hand. Watch how Dinesh. It's not going to be that specific. No, we're just going to get the notes that matter, and we're going to mute with this hand. That's right. <laughs> You know, yeah, you're just rhythm. breaking across every. You're just yeah, you're breaking yeah. across everything there. So yeah. so anyway, that's a, that's a great question, Matt. Um, so now here's the the fourth little subcategory. As we notice, we can combine these approaches, uh, like David Gilmour does on Comfortably Numb, where you know solo one is one style and the second solo is a different. But sometimes we can combine this within the same solo. Uh, Dinesh, you've got a classic for us, uh, and again, this one's on the site. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's from the Beatles white album and it was, uh, and Clapton cut this solo on my birthday, uh, years before I was born, but on my birthday, uh, nonetheless, uh, nice. can you play the, while my guitar gently weeps by the Beatles, the, the solo. Yeah, the let's solo. do it. Clapton just had a birthday, I believe. I think, yeah, yesterday, I think, uh, uh, engineer Derek was saying. I called him and I wished him. He was doing good. <laughs> How'd that go? He hung up on me. Oh, <laughs> no. Here we go. Okay. A lot of so, bends. A lot of long bends, right? A lot, a lot of bends. I had to go down a string gauge for that. No, no. Oh, did you really? <laughs> what, what, gauge, what gauge strings do you have right now? On this, it's nines. Yeah. Nines, probably what Clapton had. You know, but see, because the guitar is gently weeping, Dinesh. Yes. See what yes. he did there? All right. It was so, definitely weeping. So let's talk about what he did. Just, Dinesh, just talk, tell us about this solo. Tell us about the approach yeah. and how he combined uh, uh, a couple approaches here. So if you guys, you know, uh, so straight ahead approach. A minor pentatonic, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got our. So it's straight ahead, a lot of cool bands, which, you know, uh, brings to the point, right? When people ask me like, okay, well, what notes in that scale do I actually use to mm -hmm. solo with? Well, yes, all of them, but there's only a couple that you're mostly bending all the time. And I mean, he's just really going for, and it's always the, um, so even just to hear those bent and using advantage of them, you know, to their fullest advantage. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about the end of the solo. Right. Where it does kind of go into the chord change that's happening to come into the next part of the song. Right. Because uh, so far we're, you're playing over A minor, uh, changes that are based in A minor, G, yep. F, and E7. But he's not really playing along to those changes. He's just playing the A minor tonic uh, riff bass, lick bass thing. Riff bass, yeah. Then <laughs> he knows that the next part coming up in the song is the bridge, which goes to A major. Yeah. So Clapton is it's probably like the one scripted note he was probably maybe given by, I don't know, where it's like, oh, but if you could work your way up and land on this target note of, of your highest A, because it'll give this uplifting moment, which it, that's the effect it has on the record, right? Right. Yeah. yeah, look at that solo in, in two different parts. I, I hear, like when I was learning, you know, and listening to it, I hear that first part where it's just the riffing and the lick, you know, the lick. But as soon as the end, like, you know, um, the... Um, Seems like it's very planned. It's almost coming back to like a written part almost, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, can we think of other solos that, that will combine approaches? You know, one I was thinking of was... Um, 
uh, well, Stairway to Heaven, actually, uh, uh, I think Ava mentioned uh, Jimmy Page, where there's yeah. a lot of A minor pentatonic going on, and then um, and then and then a whole new that that uh, uh, da, da, yeah. Ba, da, da, da. There's really specific melodies going on there. Um, Dylan, can you think of some? Yeah. Um, well, let's see. You said. Uh, souls that have really specific melodies going on. Well, no, no, that combine a couple combine. of the approaches. Oh boy, like the November Rain solo was a big solo. Sure, oh, that's a good. Yeah, that's a that's a, that's a, that's a good. Well, a yeah, kid. you know what? A slash yeah. does does that too. Um, yeah. In Sweet Child of Mine, the first yep. solo is clearly. Yeah. But then, obviously, when we, once we get to that D minor part, um, he's just he just goes for it, and he goes he goes yeah. to the first approach of of, of riff and, and lick bass things. Yeah. By the way, I wanted to remind the audience. Check out the links in the description for lessons on these solos and the backing tracks that you're hearing. You can try them out for free. It's really fun. And I would say, well, it would be part of the homework a little bit, is uh, have fun with those backing tracks, by the way. That's, that's yeah. A little, you know. yeah. Um, so Dinesh, do you have final thoughts? Uh, is there a perfect solo? Is there such a thing? I, I'm happy with as long as there's a solo, period. <laughs> Really? I mean, Dude, as long as there's a solo, that's, that's what it comes <laughs> down to. I, I, I don't, man, a perfect solo, you know, that's really hard to say because, you know, as a guitar player, you, you, you look at solos that are driven more to like your playing and the art of doing it. And then you look at solos that are like parts of songs that, mm. you know, from just being a memorable part of the song. So I, I don't, I don't think there's a perfect solo, but I mean, if, if you can get a little bit of this in, in some of your playing, and it doesn't have to be anything fancy. It doesn't have to be a lot of notes. You know, you, it, it can be really simple stuff. But mm -hmm. when you're just doing original music or you're jamming or you're trying to play over some of these tracks, like if you can just incorporate a little bit of that stuff, I think that's what's going to make the magic. And, you know, you'll start to notice all this stuff pop out to you more as you listen to music with this stuff in mind, I think, you know. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking Hotel California. Is oh, like, totally. Oh, that's... Those get combination two approaches where they're, they're clearly playing over the changes. Yes. And then they, they go to this very specific melody thing that. Yes. You know, so that's where you combine two approaches. So that one just uh, popped in there. Okay, guys, this has been fun. Uh, hopefully uh, everyone watching, hopefully we've helped you somehow think about how to construct solos. And we played some examples of things. And hopefully we have you listening to guitar solos in a new way. And that'll help you uh, get started. Um, and we're going to get to the homework. Dylan, do you mind assigning the homework? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, so uh, three stages of homework here. So if you're a beginner, <laughs> right. uh, the first step is to learn the E minor pentatonic scale. So uh, check it out. We have a lesson on the site. Um, in fact, we have a lesson called Play Your First Solo that that deconstructs how to put a solo together at, a, at an entry level point. So that's a great one to check out. But the, also the learn your or just the E minor pentatonic scale lesson. <laughs> So that's, this is a scale in a solo. The way you did that yeah. was kind of a, it's very dramatic at the end. Well, you know, I put I put gravitas in there. <laughs> yes. uh, this is a scale that uh, you'll be able to, to access really, really quickly. And I think Stevie Ray Vaughan plays this scale better than any human has ever done it. There you um, go. Anyways, there you uh, go. intermediate. So learn the solo to cherry bomb. Now, that's that's quite the ask. Go ahead. Actually, can we can we speaking of can asking Danish, may I ask you to play oh, that yeah. solo again? I, you don't sure. have to use a backing track if it's if it's unless you have uh, access well, to it but I let's just got, hear it one I more time got the the sound there um yeah yeah there you go so uh so that's on the site note for note and uh dylan what's for the advance Okay, so advanced, advanced, create your own melodic solo over the changes to Say It Ain't So. Right, so, ah. so you saw me play the riff-based approach over the, the, the backing track, over the changes to Say It Ain't So. Now we're asking you to create your own melodic solo, so pay attention to what the chords are, construct something the way that the, um, I don't know if it was, uh, which, which of the guitar player in the Strokes played the lead on Rotilia, but just try and compose something. And by the way, uh, the tone that I used for Say It Ain't So early in this year, I downloaded from the Fender Play app. Um, so, uh, and uh, whoever designed it nailed it. So I wanna, I, I just, and I use Humbucker Pickup, 
with the tone world all the way off, which I believe is pretty much what Rivers did. Um, and and uh, the one that I started the uh, with which I started the episode is called Nashville Rock and Roll, which I downloaded. And this was designed by Rebecca Lavelle uh, from Lark and Poe, as I mentioned. So I just want to give her more credit because I see she did a great job. So there's tons of great tones. You can download the tones and get started on learning these solos. So you don't have to go tone hunting. And what's cool is you can actually look at the components, what the amps and what the pedals are, and you can learn how to build your own tones from that but at least uh you just download the, the tone and get started and you feel like you're that much closer to the record so it's a it's a yeah. really nice tweak they got there so so get to the homework okay uh dylan it's now your segment it's time for the giveaways bud all right hey well so uh we talk about it every week right but if you're just tuning in for the first time we actually give away uh an awesome piece of gear every week and i'm not kidding we give it away we've given away dozens of tellies p bases j bases uh, strats, acoustics, amps. I think at this point it's probably in the hundreds. So if you're asking wow. yourself, how can I get something for free? The answer is quite simple. You just join or subscribe to Fender Play. You can do it for free at first and just hit your weekly streak, which means 21 minutes of practice a week. And you'll be automatically, automatically, auto, automatically entered to win. So, uh, <laughs> and even if you don't win, you still practice your instrument. So it's a win-win and I like that you did it. So it's a win-win-win. Okay, so on top of that, uh, you'll have more practices and more chance to win in the future. So are you guys ready to hear who won this week? I am. I rather yeah. unhygienically put my pick in my mouth. So I okay, so I'm going to give you a little bit of fanfare here. Oh, nice. Uh, here we go. Uh, this week's winner is David G. David G. David. G, aren't we glad Hi, David. David won? David G, congratulations. Gee, way to go, David. Yes. Congrats, David. You know, enjoy your new guitar, bass, amp, whatever it is you choose. And Dylan, what else do you have for us? Okay, so now I got to set this down for seconds because we here at Fender Play are always looking to innovate and to push the limits of music. And we've been hard at work in the laboratories, just working away. And I'm thrilled to announce we discovered a new chord. No one thought it could happen. No one. No one. We discovered it. So we're announcing that tomorrow. Uh, I'm involved, so make sure that you follow the Fender Play Instagram so that you can see yours truly, which is me, of course, if you don't know, uh, and, and you can discover how to play this brand new chord. More stuff, though, that we've got. More stuff is we just added the full song, note for note, of my, uh, While My Guitar Gently Weeps. Now, you heard that today. Mm -hmm. uh, you can learn the entire thing. I mean, if he sniffles, that's going to be in there, so you guys are going to know the whole thing. Also, the Joe Strummer Collection, not to be left out. Mm -hmm. Make sure you check that out too. That's been really exciting to shoot. Um, I think Eugene might be involved. Yeah, I did in Coma something? Girl, which I, I I remember where I was the first time I heard Coma Girl. It's one of my favorite Joe's drummer songs. It, it was kind of a posthumous release. I love 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 that song. It, and it's uh, will you play it's some Eugene? Come on. Let's see. Uh, well, I'm tuned down here. Uh, I was coming through a festival way out west. Got that. And then you go to the coma the the coma. That sort of thing. So yeah, Coma Girl, learn it. It's great. It's a three chord rocker. That's, Perfect song. That was really Perfect good. Song. Yeah, that was good. I need my sticks. Okay, <laughs> that was it. That was it. That's oh, you're done. Okay, cool. I'm done. Well, well, a huge thank you to Dinesh for helping us with our dive into great solos. Now we want to hear what you have coming up, Dinesh. What's going on with you, bud? Oh man, Eugene, thanks to always a pleasure to be here, man. Always a great time, uh, man. You know, just. Uh, Going to be releasing out some new music soon. Oh, uh, a band called Brother that I'm in wow. with a few of my uh, really good friends, and uh, we got a little EP coming out soon, man. So I'm going to probably be posting that on my social media links at LA Guitar Guru, and uh, you LA know, just Guitar busy, Guru. man. And right. you know, watching the seasons change here in New Orleans, uh, <laughs> getting a little hot. Yeah, it's going to get steamy there. It's going to get it steamy. Sure there. Is. That's right. Uh, make sure you, you learn how to make a mint julep. That's very, very important when you live down there. Yum. <laughs> right. Now, uh, for everyone else, I want you to keep safe, keep practicing, and we'll see you next week at the same time, same place. Everybody play out on a G chord. I got to pay attention because I'm tuned out to half a step. One, two, three, four, riff bass. <laughs>